a huge craze and a huge, um, hu 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 huge, the, um, And she has, I want to say maybe like three books. Rusty. I will read thrillers constantly. Hi everyone, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse. For today's video, I wanted to talk about some great thrillers. And with Thrillerathon starting on Monday, February 18th, it seemed like a great time to do this kind of a video. So I unfortunately am not going to be able to participate in Thrillerathon, uh, partially because I'm literally in the middle of Contemporaryathon right now, and I know at least one of the books I'm reading is going to bleed into Monday, and also I'm going to be away for a few days, so. I know my limits. And the upside is like, I never need an excuse to read a thriller and I have a whole bunch of them that I want to read. So I will probably read a thriller anyway by the end of the month, but for people who are participating in it or people who are just interested in some thriller wrecks, I thought, why not pull out a few books that I've read and, you know, talk to you about those. So if you're doing thriller a -thon, feel free to throw them on your TBR. If you're not, feel free to read them and let's just talk thrillers. The first book I want to recommend is probably going to seem like the obvious one because everybody recommends it, but there's a reason why. It's because it's that damn good. And it's Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. So this came out in 2012. I read it when it first came out. I've actually read it a few times since then, which is how much I love it and how great of a story it is. And if you haven't read it or don't know anything about it, like by all means, pick this up. And if you've managed to avoid spoilers about it, pick it up. But even, I would say, even if you know sort of the twists and the spoilers and things like that, I still 100% think it's worth reading because it's so clever and so well written and just so well done across the board. It being sort of the first of its kind, it definitely, I feel like opened a whole new sort of genre within thrillers and suspense. And the characters of Nick and Amy are just so like horrible, but you, root for them but you don't and you're not sure who to trust and what's going on and there's just so much happening in it that you're just not ever quite sure where the characters stand and you get you know just sort of very quickly if you don't know anything about it it's the morning of the fifth anniversary of nick and amy and they had met in new york and had since moved back to missouri which is nick's hometown um or his hometown in missouri that's a state um, to take care of his ailing father and she's missing the morning of and Nick you know has left the house comes back and there's some sort of disturbance that's happened at the house you know sort of tables are turned over there's some broken glass something shady is going on he calls the police and off to the investigation we go and you see things from Nick's perspective and then you see things um, from Amy's perspective from a diary that she had kept from when they first met through their marriage. So you get to hear both voices. And it's it's just, it's incredible. So like I say, people recommend it for a reason and I am no different. Gone Girl's a great one. The next book I wanna recommend is The Expats by Chris Pavoni. And I have mentioned him before on this channel because he has a new book coming out this year. And well, he doesn't write, um, his new book is his fourth. It's not a series per se, but his characters do appear either majorly or minorly in other books. And the characters from this book um, play, I think, a more significant role in the book that's coming out. So I'm excited to revisit these people. And this book is um, about a woman named Kate Moore and her husband. And they live in DC, kind of struggling to make ends meet. She's a wife, she's a mom, and she's got this job. And it's, to quote this, um, an increasingly unbearable life-defining secret. So her husband winds up getting this job offer to go to Luxembourg and it's a lot of money and it's a great opportunity and they decide to go for it. And Kate is kind of hoping to sort of leave everything behind and start clean and she's going to be a housewife and she's just going to lead a completely normal life. And there they are in Luxembourg and her husband's like working like crazy. He works for a bank. She doesn't really know what he does all day. 
and she's now in the city where she doesn't speak the language, she doesn't have any friends, and she tries to kind of like hunker down and be the housewife. And they wind up meeting another American couple who have come there, and Kate is kind of instantly suspicious about these people and very nervous that kind of her past life is going to catch up with her in Luxembourg. So she starts to do some investigating and digging, and I'm just gonna read it from the jacket. It says, so Kate begins to dig, to peel back the layers of deception that surround her. She discovers fake offices and shell corporations and a hidden gun, a mysterious farmhouse and numbered accounts with bewildering sums of money, and finally unravels the mind-boggling long play con that threatens her family, her marriage, and her life. This book is so good. It's so clever. It's so well done. There's a whole bunch of people. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on. You're not sure who to trust. You're not sure who not to trust. I love Kate as a character. I think she's just such a badass. This is a great book. If you have not read Chris Pavone's work, start with this one. He has, like I say, um, two other books that are out now and a, third, a fourth one that's coming out later this year. Um, he's just, he's such a great writer and I think it's just such a great ride. Um, I love it, obviously, because I'm sitting here holding it, but couldn't recommend this one more. The next book I want to recommend is All the Missing Girls by Megan Miranda. And this was her debut novel. It's a really interesting mystery. It's really interesting how it's told. And this is about a woman named Nicolette who sort of 10 years ago, she left her hometown, lives in Philly now. She's engaged, she's got a job, like things are good. And she needs to return home um, because her father has taken ill. So like similar themes in some of these books. But the reason she really left town 10 years ago is because her best friend Corinne went missing and it was never solved. She was never found. No one ever knows what happened to her. And she comes from a really small town and it really kind of tore things apart and she just needed to get out of there. But now she returns home and kind of all the people who were there when Corinne went missing, like her brother who now has a wife and they're having a baby and her ex-boyfriend and other people in the town, um, sort of forces Nicolette to come, you know, face to face with all of these people. And then her ex is dating this girl, Annalise, who was the alibi for all of them the night that Corinne went missing. And now Annalise goes missing. And that's sort of our opening of the book. So you've got sort of just a great sort of mystery thriller in it. But what's incredibly insanely clever about this book is it's told backwards. So it's 15 days and you start on day 15 and work your way backwards. So it's just, it's, it's so uniquely done and it's such a good story and the way things come together, even though you're, you're getting things backwards but you're not getting everything and how things start to piece together, I think is just so incredibly, like I say, well done. Haven't seen anything like it before. I really enjoyed it. It was a really good book. I do have her second book, but I haven't read it yet just because of timing and I've got too many books to read and I keep picking up other stuff instead. Um, and she has another book coming out this year. So if you haven't checked her out as an author, totally recommend. Um, they're not a series, but why not start with the first one? The next book I want to recommend is an oldie, but I think it's a goodie. <laughs> it's The Firm by John Grisham. And this is the book that I read when it came out in this, you know, pocket paperback size thing. And I just loved it. And to me, this was sort of, I hadn't read like Presumed Innocent or anything at that point. And I don't know if this came out before that, but I remember kind of after reading this book, I became sort of obsessed with this subgenre of thrillers and suspense that had to do with, you know, lawyers and law firms and courtrooms. And it really got me into those types of books. And if you don't know anything about The Firm, this is a book about a lawyer, Mitch McDear, who is like top of his class at Harvard, has his pick of any firm that he wants to go to. And he winds up going with this small firm in Memphis and they kind of like woo him to the nth degree and they give him a BMW and like hook him up with the house and give him tons of money. And he's got like a brother who's in prison and obviously he's got like tons of um, student loans for law school. So they go for the money, him and his wife move down there and sure enough, this firm is not what he thought it was. And it's just a matter of time before he starts peeling away the onion, realizing there's some shady stuff going on. The FBI is then on him and he literally is like running for his life and running to stay alive and fighting to stay alive. So it's such a wonderfully fast paced, suspenseful twist and turn, tons of shady characters, 
quintessential Grisham. So I would say if you have never read this book, you are completely missing out. And if you've read it before, I would read it again because that's my plan. Um, I have, I'm like digging such a hole for myself for books to read this year to reread. And I did an entire um, video about uh, 13 books that I plan to reread this year. And I actually picked a different Grisham book, The Client, which I'm not upset about. But when I was preparing for this video and reading about this, I was like, man, I really kind of want to read this too. So we'll see. But either way, if you're a big thriller reader and haven't read this one, you're missing out big time. So I would read The Firm first time or second time or however many times. The next book I want to recommend is In a Dark, Dark Wood by Ruth Ware. And this is Ruth Ware's first book. And I love it. And I find that Ruth Ware is kind of like Tana French and people like either love her or they don't. And they love the writing or they don't. And I love it. <laughs> and obviously that's why it's on the list. So this is the first book by her that I actually read. She's got four books out and this is my favorite of her books. And I think why some people, you know, aren't down with it. It's an unreliable narrator book, which just, that doesn't spoil anything, just putting it out there. And whether people are sort of like tired of the trope or it's just not their thing, I think that's one reason why some people don't like it. But I do. And it's a very atmospheric book. It is a book that's sort of told, you know, in two timelines in the sense of like our main character, her name's Leonora. And it's like some people know her as Lee and some people know her as Nora. So you have kind of like her past life with high school and college and those friends and her current life. She's a writer. She's kind of cut off from some people. She's kind of moved on from all of these folks. And she winds up getting invited to a hen party bachelorette in the English countryside for one of the girls who she hasn't talked to in a long time. And a mutual friend of theirs is going and kind of convinces her to go, even though she doesn't really want to, but she goes anyway. And, you know, kind of the first night there, it's a mix of old friends and new friends and old emotions come up and sort of secrets come out and conversations happen and there's some like revelations. But then you kind of fast forward 48 hours and Nora wakes up in a hospital, no memory of what happened, only that she knows somebody died and she doesn't know who or how or at whose hands. And she is struggling to piece together the details of, you know, kind of what happened between that first night that she remembers and her being in the hospital bed. So I think it's great. I think it's a good ride. It's not a huge, huge book. Um, if you are interested in Ruth Ware or this is not a book by her that you've read, I think it is 100% worth the read. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. The last book I want to recommend is Magpie Murders by Anthony Horowitz. And this book, again, is like so clever, so uniquely written, such a unique concept. And I had heard about this a few years ago at a writing conference. Sorry, this book weighs like 100 pounds. Um, and all these authors were like, you just have to read this book. Like, we're not even going to try and explain what it's about. Like, you just need to get this book. It's so good. It's that good. And I'm going to try a little bit to tell you what it's about. Um, so it is set in London and modern day you have this author, Ellen Conway, who is kind of this notoriously difficult writer, author, you know, to deal with, but he's like the big money maker for this publishing house. And he sends his new manuscript to his editor and she's like excited to get it. He's difficult to deal with, but like I say, like he brings in tons of money. So they put up with him and she's, you know, happy to get it kind of expects it to be everything it always is, which is there's murders and there's dead bodies and there's investigation and it's this beloved detective that he writes. And what she starts to realize is that there's kind of like a story within the story about greed and deception and other things going on that eventually leads to murder and not just in his book. And what makes this so clever is you have kind of the present day where the editors, you know, she gets the manuscript and she kind of like hunkers down at her apartment to read it. And then the actual book is in the book. So it's a book within a book. So you get to read the mystery kind of along with her and discover what she's discovering. And then you have modern day sort of mixed in. So such a clever concept. I thought this was just ingeniously done. It's a really good book. It's a, it's a good, it's not a, um, you know, cause you, you have like that Agatha Christie level book that you're reading. So it's sort of like, it appeals to like that more kind of throwback kind of mystery that I enjoy. But then you also have the modern day, which is a more kind of high paced suspense to it. So I really enjoyed it. And I, you know, if you haven't read it, 
absolutely pick it up. It's worth it. It's, it's a huge book. And what's horrible is like, I can't even tell you how many pages it is because the book within the book is numbered different numbers, but for some frame of reference, it's completely fat, but it's a worthwhile chunker of a read. Um, definitely check out Magpie Murders. So that does it for some thriller recommendations. I know Gone Girl was an obvious one, but I also tried to pick some ones that maybe were a little bit more obscure, or maybe not totally top of people's lists. Like I say, I love thrillers and I have read so many of them. It's just, I, I just love them. I love them, they're my go-to. I will never say no to a thriller. So if you are doing Thriller-a-thon, yay! Maybe one of these books will make it onto your list or if you were looking for something to read just in general, maybe one of these will kind of pique your interest. But I think they're all great writers. I think they all are great storytellers. And obviously I recommend all of these books. Definitely let me know if you have read any of these books or if you've read other books by these authors that you liked. And of course, if you have other thrillers to recommend to me, I'd love to hear about them. So <laughs> write down in the comments below if you've got some other books to chat about. But thank you guys for watching and spending some time here today. If you haven't already, definitely subscribe so you can get more bookish videos. Hit that alert button so you know for sure when they come. And I will be back with more videos soon and hopefully you'll be back to join me. So thanks again for watching today and I'll see you guys really soon. Bye everybody.